Here now to look at the practicality of the former president's economic proposals is Douglas Holtz Aiken. He's the former director of the Congressional Budget Office, a former policy advisor to late Senator John McCain, and the president of the American Action Forum, a right leaning think tank. Good morning to you, sir. So let's talk about this. The former president says he wants to get rid of the country's $35 trillion debt. It is, of course, worth noting he added nearly $8 trillion to the debt during his time in office after vowing to eliminate it. He also says he's going to slow inflation, lower taxes, and he briefly touched on solutions for all of this, which includes drilling for more oil and raising tariffs. How realistic are his solutions? Uh, I, I don't think it's particularly realistic to promise to get rid of the debts. We would be just en enormously benefited if we could stabilize the growth in the debt relative to the economy. I mean, that's a huge challenge, something that neither candidate is focused on. It's really something that we ought to be taking very seriously. Uh, you know, it is true that the Biden administration's climate agenda has gotten a lot of high profile attention for cutting back on leases, cutting back on export facilities for LNGs, the licensing of those. But the reality on the ground is that the U.S. is producing more oil and natural gas than ever. Uh, I don't think there would be a dramatic change in pricing on, a, on the global stage from, from those moves. And, uh, you know, tariffs are taxes. And uh, he's proposed a 10 percent tariff. That's a three trillion dollar tax increase over the next 10 years. Uh, he, he floated 20 percent uh, yesterday. That, that would be six trillion. Uh, there's nothing about six trillion dollars in additional taxes that's going to help us with either inflation or our other growth problems. And to my understanding, the experts that I've spoken to, those tariffs, you say they're taxes, that gets ultimately passed on to the consumer in America, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. There's no question about that. Yeah. What probably a far more digestible issue uh, is this idea of not taxing <laughs> tips, which interestingly enough, both Harris and Trump. Uh, <laughs> well, you've already grunted, so I, I kind of partially have an answer. What are the pros and cons of that as, as you see it? Uh, I, I don't have any pros. I'll be honest about that. Um, you know, I, I was on the McCain campaign. I, I understand the politics of these sort of gimmicky proposals. And, you know, uh, there is no merit to this idea. Uh, number one, uh, all labor compensation be taxed equally. That's the benchmark. There's no reason to, to single out tips as a special kind of, of income. Uh, second thing is that you set up bad incentives. You, you set up an incentive to pay people in tips as opposed to wages and salaries. You distort pay packages, you cause problems instead of solving them. The third thing is the sort of fairness issue. That cuts the wrong way, in, in my view. I, I don't think there's anything about waitressing, waiting, that is uniquely onerous compared to janitorial services or a million other low-paid service jobs in the economy. So why do you single out this particular form of occupation? And it isn't well targeted on poor people. If you're trying to help poor people, you know, go get the earned income tax credit, which is targeted on people who have low incomes, rewards work. So on, on the sort of merits of tax efficiency and, and fairness, this just doesn't measure up. And I will just note for the record, maybe people aren't paying taxes to begin with. So how much does this really matter? Of course, when we talk about the economy, a lot of people are focused on high inflation. Uh, it has started to cool off. It's much lower than we saw in the summer of uh, 2022. It's now below 3%. Uh, so there has been some significant progress made. And while the public soured on President Biden's handling of the economy, Vice President Harris is doing much better. She and Trump are virtually tied when it comes to voter trust on this issue. Why is she being viewed different than the president? Uh, uh, this is a, a unique opportunity for the vice president. Um, the, the record is very unpopular. The, I mean, the record over 43 months is inflation has averaged 5.4 percent on average in those 43 months, and wages have grown less than 5 percent per month. So, people have been working and are further behind, and that was the fundamental problem. With Bidenomics enormously unpopular. She is trying to rebrand herself as not the owner of just that record, but of new ideas that will be different and effective. This is the window, and I can't tell you how effective it's, it's going to be, and I'm looking forward to the speech tomorrow, like everyone, to see exactly what she has in mind. I, I just want to point out that one of the real problems in this discussion is that people think about inflation going down as the price is going back. And the reality is that when you fill up the grocery basket, it costs 30 or $40 more than it used to, and you don't have the 30 or 40 bucks. People feel that. There is nothing about getting inflation to zero that sends the prices back to their old levels. It just stops going up. So um, 
no one has a, a, an easy solution for this other than to produce better growth and better wages so that we can accommodate this higher prices. Just as a point of clarity, wage growth has been beating inflation for about a year and a half now. But for the entirety of the record, it hasn't. So, so if you look at the, the, the Biden administration, people have been at work the entire time and, and been further behind as a result. Yeah, they've had good news recently, but it hasn't made up for those first couple of years. And real quick, at the end of the day, though, I think people overestimate how much the president can act. Any president can control the economy. The world shut down because of Absolutely. COVID. And I don't understand why any rational person, regardless of politics, would think the world was going to get back to normal after everything shut down. Then there was this surge of, of demand. It, we had a life-altering event that killed millions of people and shut down the world. It just seems to me to be detached from reality to politically assign something that was really beyond our control. Something horrific happened, and the rebound from that is going to take years, and that's the reason your bread and eggs cost a lot more these days. And we'll get back to normal, but you have to pause and think where we were four years ago. That's not a Trump or I Biden issue. To differ. I mean, we, we had a very big cataclysm in 2020 and, and i think the policy response was extraordinary the fed did very well congress and the administration did very well so nothing wrong with the cares act in 2021 big policy errors were made and they produced the inflation it's not just the supply side it was over stimulus on monetary and fiscal demand and we're paying for it now it takes a long time to clean that up but people appreciated those checks at the time to get through a horrific time economically in the country that's that's the other side people like you know there's a lot of fraud because there always is but that check helped a lot of people get by as the when the world shut down is the human side of that. Would you not have given the checks out? No, well, I said in 2020 we did exactly the right thing. 2021, when we passed the American Rescue Plan, the economy was growing at 6.5%. No need for stimulus. The economy was about $400 billion below potential. You don't need $2 trillion to close that kind of gap. It was just a basic policy error. It was too much at the wrong time, and we, we've been paying for it since. Douglas Holt Aiken, former director of the Congressional Budget Office. Thank you so much for your time and your insight, sir. We do appreciate it. We'll be right back.